um, please grab your Bibles. And if you're a child that can read and you don't have a Bible, please help yourself to a Bible right now because I'm preaching to the kids. All right, if you need a Bible, make sure you grab one. You're going to need one. This sermon's tailor made just for the kids. All right, so make sure you get one if you need one. If you, if you can read, that is, all right, if you can read. Otherwise, the little ones will probably rip them apart. <laughs> if you can read it, please turn there. Okay, guys, go to Colossians chapter 3. Obviously, where uh, our brother Jason read from, Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well and pleasing unto the Lord. So the title of the sermon tonight is, Children, obey your parents. Children, obey your parents. And yes, we're continuing the series on the family. And I said I've got a sermon lined up for the kids. This is the one, okay? This is like sermon number nine on the family or something. All right, so there's a lot more sermons than I thought I originally had like uh, planned, but that's okay. Um, so even though this is tailored to the children, even though it's focused to the children, I do believe it's relevant to everybody anyway, okay? Because the Word of God uh, is relevant to children, it's relevant to adults, to parents, to all alike. And so I'm sure there's going to be a lot that we can all take from uh, uh, tonight. But the first thing I want you to notice there in Colossians 3, why is it important that children should obey their parents? Okay, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. All right, so children, yes, you know, your parents bring you to church. You know, yes, your parents read you the Bible. Yes, they teach you things that you find in the Word of God. And you might think, well, it's dad's job, it's mom's job. And yes, it is. It is their job to be the spiritual leader, to please the Lord and to guide the house. But you know, it's also your job. You get a commandment from God and God tells the children, obey your parents for this is well pleasing to him. You know, if you want to be children that please the Lord, that make a, bring a smile upon his face, he can look down and, and, and shine his glory and his blessings upon your life, even as children, your command from God is not go out and work. All right, so God's asking from the children. God's not saying go out there and, and uh, you, know, um, you know, build a house, you know, raise a family. Now, says, children, obey your parents. Okay, that's the key command that you're going to have while you're under the house, under the authority of mom and dad. All right, this is a command straight to you from God. All right, now turn to Ephesians chapter 6 as well. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Because the first point there is if you obey the, uh, your parents, you are actually pleasing the Lord. All right? So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Hey, guys, if you want to do what's right, you don't want to do what's wrong, you don't want to get in trouble and find yourself getting disciplined. What are you supposed to do? Obey your parents. God says this is right. This is righteous. This is what God commands from you, right? He says, look, in order for you to please me, in order for you to know the righteousness of God, you need to obey your parents, okay? Kids, you need to learn what's right and what's wrong. And one of the first things that you're going to understand about what's right is that obeying my parents is right. It's the righteousness of God. It's what he wants in your life. Verse number two, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You know the 10 commandments that God gives us? The first commandment where God promises something, if you do it right, is honor thy father and mother. And what is that promise? It's found in verse number three there. That it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. I mean, there's two promises there, right? that it may be well with thee, that you can have a happy life, a successful life. You know, you can have a life where you can overcome uh, trials and, and, and struggles, you know, and look back in your life and say, well, you know, I had a great life. How does that start? By obeying mom and dad, by honoring mother and father, respecting them, okay? And that thou mayest live long on the earth. I mean, wow. You know, if God gives you a long life, well, God promises to give you a long life, if you obey mom and dad. Now, I'm sure part of that is just listening to your parents' advice. You know, mom and dad saying, hey, don't go into the kitchen and play with knives. 
Don't go into the kitchen and play with hot water. Yeah, it's going to give you a long life just, just by being safe. But you know, God steps in and says, look, I'm going to give you a long life. I'm going to give you a happy life. And you just have to obey mom and dad. I mean, hey, look, that's what we want from you anyway. And God wants to reward you if you do it right. If you be obedient to mom and dad. Okay? And there's nothing, let me tell you, it doesn't matter if your mom or dad are saved or, or not saved. It doesn't matter if you come from a broken home or whatever. The thing mom and dad wants the most from their children is obedience. For the kids to do what is asked of them. Okay? Now, the fact that God has to tell us twice, in Colossians and Ephesians, children, obey your parents. The fact that God has to tell us twice, do you think he's telling us because it's easy for kids to obey parents or because it's challenging? It's challenging, right? It requires you to give up your flesh a little bit for you to say, okay, not my will, but my parents will. I'm going to do what they ask of me. Okay, and God says it twice because he knows the kids need to hear it twice at least, right? And normally when God commands something from us, it's because God knows it's challenging. God knows that it's not going to be the easiest thing to do always to obey mom and dad. All right? Now, you guys go to the book of Proverbs, please. We're going to spend most of our time in the book of Proverbs. So if you don't know where that is, open up your Bible to halfway. You should get to Psalms, somewhere in Psalms. And it's the book after Psalms, okay? It's Proverbs. Turn to the book of Proverbs, which is after Psalms. Proverbs chapter 23. Go to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Let's read there. The Bible says, Hearken, that's listen to, unto thy father that beget thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. What does God want from you? To listen to your parents, right? So if you listen to them, you'll be able to obey them. And despise not thy mother when she is old. You know, it's possible for children to both love their parents, and it's also possible for children to despise or hate their parents. And we're going to look at this uh, as we go through tonight. But look at verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Hey, this is the instruction for children. God wants you to increase in wisdom and understanding in learning. And a big part of that is listening and obeying mom and dad. Huge part of it. Okay? Huge part of it. Look at verse 24. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. You know what that means? When you do what's right, which is obeying parents, when you listen to them and, and do it hard, you, know, um, you know, quickly and obediently, it says it gives your father uh, joy. He's going to rejoice when you do what's right. And then it says, And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. All right? So if you want to make mom and dad happy, what do you have to do? Obey mom and dad. Learn and grow, right? When you get disciplined, when you get corrected, don't get angry. Don't despise your parents. Say, hey, this is an opportunity for me to learn wisdom, to learn understanding, so I don't make the same mistakes again. And this isn't just about your, your childhood, guys. This is about your future. The lessons you learn today as a child are going to be relevant to you in the future when you grow up as an adult. If you, learn, if you don't learn certain lessons now as a child, you're going to struggle as an adult. Okay? We'll go into that later on. Verse 25. Thy mother, sorry, thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Mum and dads, we love it when our kids, you know, uh, obey us. Children, if you want to bring a smile to the face of your mum and dad, you might say, hey, mum and dad have been a bit, uh, you know, depressed lately. They've been a bit cast down lately. You know what's going to make them happy? You go to mum and dad and say, mum and dad, what do you want us to do? And you go and do exactly what they want. That's going to bring them great joy. All right? Maybe one of, the, one of the reasons they're cast down and depressed is because their children have not been obeying them. Okay? So children, you ought to have the mindset, I'm either going to give joy to my parents or I'm going to despise them. Okay? And obviously, we want to make sure we bring them joy. All right? Now, you stay there in Proverbs. I won't get you to turn anywhere else. But the question comes up, is there ever a time that I should disobey my parents? Is there ever a time that I should disobey my parents? And I'd like to say, no, there's never a time. But there could be a time. There could be a time. 
Acts 5.29 says, we ought, we ought to obey God rather than men. Okay, we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, we as adults, we apply this in many ways, right? You know, uh, you know uh, when, when dad goes to work, you know, the employer might ask him to do something that's dishonest. He might ask him to do something that is wrong. And then dad will have to decide, well, do I obey man? I know this is wrong. I know God's not going to be happy when I do it. Or do I obey the Lord? And in that time, the right thing to do is disobey the employer and do what's right in the sight of the Lord. All right? You know, wives should obey God rather than their husbands. Now, I would like to say, wives, always obey your husbands. But sometimes, just like the employer, the husband might ask you to do something that's wrong, that's sinful, right? He might say, hey, I don't want you going to church. Hey, but you'd rather, the Bible says we'd rather obey God than men. Okay? My point is, whatever authority God has put over you, yes, obey them 100%, except when their instruction is to disobey the Lord when their instruction is to commit sin. You know, we should obey God rather than government, right? If government asks us to do something that's ungodly or wicked, we should say no. And if the pastor of your church, me, asks you to do something that's sinful, you should say no, you should know better, all right? I'm going to obey God rather than man, okay? It's always the case. Whatever authority God has given over you. And so, children, you ought to obey God rather than man. But what does God say to obey your parents? All right? So obviously, that's the main thing that you need to do. But when they ask you to do something that's wrong or sinful, it would be right of you to disobey and say, Mom, Dad, that's wrong. God would not be happy to do that for, for me to do that. That's right. Okay? But I do recognize this. I recognize that obviously children are children. Okay? And they're developing and growing. And parents are supposed to have absolute authority over a child. I mean, that's, you know, because if parents are believers trying to follow the Word of God, it works out perfectly. But every now and again, mom and dad might fail. Okay? They might be backslidden, or you might grow up in a Christian home, or whatever. Then, you know, you may cave in. You may do something that is wicked or sinful that your parents have asked you to do. Okay? That might happen. Okay? Because obviously, you might be afraid to disobey your parents, so you decide to do what's wrong. Okay, maybe you've done that in the past, or maybe an opportunity like that might come up in the future. But let me just say this. Something that I've learned in the Bible is that God is more merciful to, to children than He is to the parents. Okay? I mean, if this church failed, God would hold me accountable more than the church members. All right? And when the, when, when, if your parents ask you to do something wicked or sinful, he's going to hold mom and dad accountable, especially dad, over the children. Let me give you one example of this. You don't need to turn there, but I'm sure you're familiar with the story of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they went into the wilderness, and God was leading them into the promised land. Remember that? Into the land of Canaan. And when they sent some spies into the land, they, they said they saw giants. And uh, certain of the spies was, uh, I guess, uh, mindful to warn Israel about going in. You know, they brought fear and saying, look, th th these men are powerful. These men are mighty. They're like giants. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. And then the people were afraid to go into the promised land in disobedience to God, except for Joshua and Caleb. And uh, you remember the, what the punishment was? God was upset because he told Israel to go into that land. They could have inherited that land straight away. But I'll just quickly read to you in Numbers 14, verse 28. This is the, 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 um, the wrath that God put upon Israel at that, that, at that day. He says, Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses, that's your dead bodies, shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of uh, Jepuni, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, so your little ones, your, your children that are 20 years old and under, or 20 and under 20, which ye, ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. So something we see with God is that 
He's more merciful with children than he is with the adults, okay? Because God knows that mums and dads have the authority. They're the ones that ultimately make the decision. And so my point is, if you have done something that is sinful or wicked because of your parents' instructions, well, you know, you should, you should say sorry to the Lord, but remember, keep in mind that God is going to hold your parents accountable to that more so than you. God will be more merciful to you and may have to chastise your parents for making you do that, okay? So there is a bit of leeway there as a child. You do get away a little bit more because God knows you're learning, you're growing, and you're under the authority that, that, uh, of mom and dad there, okay? So, you know, we should be mindful as parents, you know, while our kids are young, while they're under 20, that we can uh, influence their lives, that God holds us accountable for their actions. If they're disobedient kids, well, blame the kids. Well, no, blame mom and dad, all right? If the kids don't know how to sit still and, you know, uh, and be quiet, you know, is, it, is it the kids' fault? No, it's mom and dad that needs to instruct them these things. You know, if the kids go to the shops and, and, and take, uh, you know, uh, th- things from the, from, the, from the aisles and throw them on the floor, well, it's the kids' fault, look how naughty. No, it's mom and dad. Mom, you know, God always holds mom and dads accountable for the children. But does that mean you just get away with it? No, God gives you a time, right? God gives you to grow up as a child. And then when you turn 20, guess what? God holds you fully accountable for your actions. Once you're over 20 years old, you can't turn around to God and say, but, but God, my parents. No, it's too late. Whatever you do, you're accountable 100% for those actions. All right? So use this time as a child to learn. Yes, to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes. Okay? So that way when you grow up, you're not making those, those same mistakes or learning those same lessons that you should have learned as a child. All right? And uh, you know what? I've seen people 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, parents are dead. Ah, my life is a ruin because of my parents. You know, I grew up in a broken home. and all. Look, you've had plenty of time to grow and mature. Okay? And God's holding you accountable for the mistakes that you make. Now, let me talk about some life lessons. Because as a child, guys, you have an advantage, all right? The lessons you have to learn are going to come into your life frequently, okay? There are things, look, a child's mind is made to absorb information, to learn. You know, a a child picks up when things, you know, when there's hypocrisy, more than a parent that an adult does. Kids pick up double standards more often than what an adult does. You know, because kids come from usually a bit of a blank slate and they're learning things as they go, okay? Whereas adults, we've sort of seen the world, we've seen how corrupt the world is, and sometimes our mind's not fully established, you know, and, and not fully aware of what's going on. But children usually pick things up pretty quickly, all right? So you've got an opportunity to learn things. Now let me talk about a couple of things here, all right? Because kids... You're going to have conflict at times with other kids, all right? And if you haven't, then you haven't been a kid yet, all right? Or if you have a sibling, you have, you know, ch- you know uh, brothers and sisters that you, you grow up with, you're going to have conflicts with your brothers and sisters. I mean, show of hand, kids, tell me if you've not had any conflicts with your siblings. If not have, just Brody. He's perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the perfect child later on, the generation that thinks they're pure. No, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. No, we've all gone through conflict, all right? Now, as a child, when you go through conflict, when you fight with your friends or whatever, that's like the most important thing in the world for you. That's like, wow, this is, this is more important than, you know, some war that's going on, you know, or, or the persecution of Christians in some places in the world. You know, it's more important than, you know, that, uh, the, the abortions that are taking place in the earth. You know, the, 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 the conflicts you have as a child just, just consume your mind and you're thinking about it. And, um, you know, it eats you up and can, can cause you to be bitter. But, you know, God allows, guys, conflicts. God allows tribulations and trials, just like an adult, so you can learn. Okay, so you can grow up and say, hold on. You know what? There's going to be conflict in life. And I need to learn from this. I need to learn how to improve myself. I need to ha- learn how to improve my social skills with others. I need to see where things have gone wrong and make peace. All right? Now, let me say this. If you can't work it out now as a kid, 
And let me say, your conflicts are like this small next to what the world, you know, as an adult, you're going to go through. If you can't solve conflicts as a child, you're going to struggle as an adult. You're going to struggle. But this is now the time to learn, to get wisdom, to get learning, to get understanding. All right? Conflict is an opportunity for you to learn that you won't always get your way in life. That's life. Okay? And you might be well, like, it's not fair. That's life. We live in a sin-cursed world. Okay? We, 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 we're all sinners. We all come short. Look, if God was fair, He'd just let us all die and go to hell. All right? The fact that He can step in and give us the Lord Jesus Christ, show us love and show us mercy, ought to teach us that when we have conflicts, and look, the things your friends have done to you is nowhere near what we've done to the Lord God, the sins that we've committed against Him. If God can show us love and mercy, then you can learn that as well. All right? Yeah, it's not always going to go your way. You've got to learn that, okay? And you can't always get upset when things don't go according to your way, you, you know, the way you want it to go. With conflicts, it gives you an opportunity to learn to apologize, to say sorry, you know? And even if you think, well, I don't know, maybe I wasn't at fault, but I'm going to apologize anyway. Awesome. Step in. You know, Jesus loves the peacemaker. Jesus loves the one that steps in and says, you know what? I don't know why we had a fight, but I'm sorry. Can we be friends? Can we just put that behind us and move on? This is your time, kids, to learn these things. If you don't learn it now, you're going to struggle as an adult. And the conflicts as an adult are going to be much greater. Okay? And if you can't solve them now, you're not going to be able to solve those greater problems. You know, learn to be a peacemaker. God loves it. Jesus Christ loves it. Don't be a sore winner. You know what a sore winner is? Or a sore loser? A sore, let's talk about the sore loser. Right, you're playing a game and you lose and you get all upset and all angry. You know, I, I lost. I lost again. You know, maybe you're playing with a big brother or something. They're always beating you because they're a bit smarter. They've learned a bit more. They're a bit more experienced. And you get upset and you have a tantrum. And then, and then all of a sudden, why doesn't anybody want to play with me now? Well, it's because you're a sore loser. You know, learn to lose with dignity. You know, when you lose something, that's a chance to put your hand out and say, well played. Well done. You did great. Okay? Learn to uh, rejoice in the success of others. That's important. Okay? But also, if you're the winner, don't be the sore winner. The sore winner is worse than the sore loser. The sore winner is like, say, ah, I'm so good. You know, you can never beat me. I'm better than you. You're just going to annoy the other kids around you. And they're not going to want to play with you. And you're going to be like, well, why does anyone want to play with me? Is it because I keep winning? No, because you're a sore winner, all right? And you need to learn when you win, you know, that you stick out your hand and say, well played, maybe next time you'll you win, right? Encourage the person that lost, bring them up to your level, train them and teach them as well, all right? Your conflicts are small, kids. They're small, they're tiny. But I know it's always on your mind, Okay? but they're small, all right? <coughs> and you need to learn the lessons. If you find yourself constantly clashing, you know, constantly clashing at church, constantly clashing at home, and, you, and it's just always happening, and you're never learning to make peace, then you're going to grow up to be an adult that's always in conflict, that's always fighting, that can't make friends, that's always angry, that's always frustrated, and always thinking about other people and being a busybody rather than being focused on your own life and making sure you can be a blessing to others. Okay? This is the time to learn your lessons, all right? And yeah, if, you, if you're having conflicts non-stop, you don't solve them, you're going to have conflicts with your spouse, you know, with your husband, with your wife. You're going to have conflicts with your children, with your extended family, with your friends. It's never going to end until you learn the lesson. And the lessons are to be learned now. All right? But if you learn that life, yeah, life is not fair. If you learn that you're not always going to get your way, if you learn to make peace, move on, recognize that everybody has faults, recognize your own faults and go, you know what, sometimes it's me as well. All right? If you can learn that, then you're going to be a successful person in life. You're going to live a happy life. 
You're going to be able to, you know, when things go bad, you're going to be able to overcome those things. Or things that don't matter, you're just going to be able to overlook and go, whatever, I'm just going to move on with my life. And that's important. That's important because the generation you guys are growing up in, guys, there's no obedience. This stuff is not being taught by mums and dads. Mums and dads think the, the public school's going to teach them. It's not. The public school's making things worse. It's teaching them to be self-entitled. It's teaching them to be selfish. It's teaching them to look after number one. All right? And not to, you know, not to even consider God pleasing the Lord. All right? You guys are blessed to, have, to be in a Christian home. You guys are blessed to be in a good church. And you're blessed to have the Bible. You know, learn what God says. If you want a successful, happy life, you mess up now, guys. It can cause you to mess up in the future. Okay? It's so important. And, um, you know, another lesson. If mom and dad's, m- mom goes to you, you know, who can I use as an example? Izzy. Isabel. All right, let's just use you. Don't get upset. But if mom says to you, you know, Isabel, go and clean three windows of the house. And mom has asked Matthias to clean one. You go, that's not fair. You know, I've cleaned three and he's cleaning one. Is that being obedient? No. Is that having a good attitude? No, that's talking back, isn't it? It's talking back. Hey, look, you need to learn the lesson. Mom says, go clean through windows. Yes, mom, big smile on your face. Go and do it straight away. It doesn't matter if life's not fair, right? It doesn't matter if someone else didn't do as much as you did. Look, there's a lesson to be learnt. I'll tell you now. And look, you can take it in two ways. You can either get angry and frustrated. Life's not fair. Why is this my mom and dad? You know, mom loves this one more than that one, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll grow up to be an adult and you'll be whinging, whinging, whinging as well. Or you put your head down and go, yes, mom, you just do it. You clean the windows. Then guess what? When you're an adult, you're going to be three times more successful. You're going to be three times more productive. And people are going to say, how do you, how do you manage to do all these things? Manage to do all these projects. How do you manage to have so many kids and keep things in order? How do you manage to, you know, do this project and do that and blah, blah? You say, you know why? Because when mom asked me to clean those three windows, I just put my head down and I just did it. You know, I learned to be uh, a hard worker. I learned to be uh, respectful to authority. I learned to do the job done, you know, do it quickly and do it well. And when you're an adult, it's going to pay off. You're going to be better off than those that didn't have this kind of instruction. Okay, so it's all about your attitude. It's all about your obedience. The Bible says, you can turn there, guys, Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It's a, it's a very popular passage, uh, verse, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hey, that's the good things. Yes, all the good things you can learn now as a child, you're not going to depart from that when you're old. You're going to carry on and have those good characteristics about yourself. But same thing. If you learn the bad ways, if you learn to be disobedient, you learn to be a whinger, you learn to talk back, you're going to grow up and be the loser. You're going to grow up and your life's going to be destroyed. And you're going to wonder, how come? How come my life's so bad? Why is God so angry at me? He's not. It's just that you've not learned your lesson, you've not grown up, and you're still carrying the same problems that you carried when you were a child. All right, turn to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You see, this verse talks about these two things. Making your father glad. Hey, you have a choice in your life as a child. Do I make my parents happy or do I despise my mother there? Oh, sorry, but the foolish son is heaviness to his mother, it says there. What does it mean to be heavy? To be a burden, you know, to be a heavy weight that mom has to carry around. And often the Bible talks about the mother here because the mother is usually a lot more emotional, you know, has that softer heart to the children. And when the children fail, it usually hurts mom more than it hurts dad. All right? I'll just quickly read to you from Proverbs 15, 20. It says, A wise son maketh a glad father. That's what we want, right? Gladness. But a foolish man despiseth his mother. You know, your actions as a child affects your parents. It affects their joy. 
Okay, it affects their sadness as well, their sorrow, if you're disobedient and not uh, pulling your weight, not being helpful, not being happy, not being cheerful, not being obedient. You can have an effect on your parents. You need to understand this. Your role as a child does play a huge part in the, the, uh, the dynamics as a family. Okay? Huge part. You can turn sorrow into joy very quickly, children. You can. Okay? Now, of course, mum and dad should be owning this. You know, mums and dads should be driving the joy, the unity in the family. But I'm just trying to say, guys, sometimes mum and dad are weak as well. You know, we have a sinful nature as well. We can do the wrong things. But sometimes when mum and dad are a bit down, the kids can turn it. I remember once, I, was having, I, was, I can't remember why I was upset. I was just having a, a, just a bad day, and I went to bed. And this wasn't even real. This was just a dream. I had a dream that Jonathan came up to me. He was little, you know, like maybe three years old. And he said, in my dream, he goes, Papa, hold me, hold me. So I hold him, and he goes, you know, Papa, I'm high. And I just remember waking up from there, like, and I was so happy. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I had this sorrow, this, this burden on my, on my mind. And then just thinking about holding my child up and him being so happy at just being held by Dad. It's just a dream. It wasn't even happen in real life. How much more better would it have been if it was in real life? You know what I'm trying, I'm trying to say, guys? You know, your positive attitude, your obedience, your love to mom and dad can change the dynamics in a family as well. Can bring great joy. All right? Go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 24. Proverbs 28, 24. We're now looking at some bad examples of children. Proverbs 28, 24, it says, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. You know what? Children, you can rob your parents. All right? And it's not just money. All right? This is probably an example of money, but you can rob your parents of joy. You can rob your parents of time, all right? If, if mom says, hey, can you clean up your room in the next 10 minutes? In the next 10 minutes, you're not doing it, you're doing something else, and then it's not done. So you need another 10 minutes to get it done. You're robbing your parents of time right there when you could have been doing something more productive, more useful with your time, okay? You know, usually moms are busy trying to prepare meals, usually busy trying to homeschool, usually busy with all the other household tasks that need to be done, the laundry, the ironing, whatever else you guys do, you know. And when kids waste time from their parents, they are robbing their parents of time. You don't want to be that way, okay? You don't want to be a companion of a destroyer. And, you know, possessions. You could, you could uh, destroy possessions in your house. You don't look after the things that mom and dad have worked hard to, to, to bring, right? You know, the, the new couch or a table or chairs or whatever, and you, you know, you jump on those tables, you jump on the couches, you ruin them, you know, you ride on the walls or whatever. Hey, all that stuff is robbing your parents, okay? Be mindful. You don't want to be a companion of a, uh, of a destroyer, okay? You, if, if you don't respect your parents, then you're going to surround yourself with people that will ultimately destroy your own life. Okay, you need to grow up and learn. Now, go to Proverbs 29, 15. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15. Now, kids, when you disobey mom and dad, what should you expect? Anyone? Brody? A discipline? Yep, discipline. Yep, absolutely. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Now you say, no, no, no. The rod gives me a sore bottom. No, God says it gives wisdom. Right? God says you, he wants you to learn, right? To learn from your mistakes. You know, when, when mom and dad get that rod and give you that smack, it's giving you a bit of wisdom. It's going, uh-oh, if I do this, I know I'm in trouble. All right, and I better make sure I don't do it again. It's giving you a bit of wisdom, right? But look what it says. But a child left to himself, the child that does not get the discipline, bringeth his mother to shame. Guys, you shouldn't be begging your parents, please, please, don't, don't smack me. 
No. You're not going to get the wisdom if you don't get the smack. All right? And you bring your mother to shame. Okay? Because you're not learning your lessons. You're not taking the discipline. And you'll think, you'll grow up thinking, wow, I can get away with things and not get disciplined. All right? And you'll think that for mum and dad. And then you're going to think about that with the government, with police. Right? I can just speed. I can just do this. I can just, whatever I want in my life and think you get away with it, you could end up killing yourself. You could end up being put in jail because you've not respected the authority that God has first given you with mum and dad. Okay? If you can't respect the authority of mum and dad, you're also going to be a poor worker. You're not going to be making good money because you're not going to respect your employer, the one that gives you instruction on your job. If you couldn't listen to mum and dad, how are you going to listen to a stranger that you don't even love and respect? All right? And it will bring your mother to shame. It will bring your mother. You know, mums and dads, we need to smack our kids. That's what the Bible says. Okay? That's what we need to do. Go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. And we're almost done now. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. I want you guys to pay attention to this one now. Proverbs 30, verse 11. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. You know what curse means? To desire harm, to want to hurt your dad, to hurt your parents. The Bible says there is a generation like that. You might say, well, that's not us. I hope, I hope so. I hope that's not you. Okay? But there is a generation like this. And let me say to you guys, as a child, I grew up in a really bad generation, okay? But I feel sorry for you, you know, because I, I love you guys. I want to see you serve the Lord with all your heart. But the generation you're growing up in is even worse, even worse. And if the Lord does not come back, your children are going to grow up in a generation even worse than your own, okay? I believe we're in this generation today. You know, you just go out there and you'll see children cursing their parents, you see children not listening, not obeying, not blessing their mother. You know, have you ever said these words, leave me alone, mom? You know, you're not blessing your mother. You don't want to spend time with your mom. That is a generation we're seeing today. Get away from me. I've got my computer games. I've got to play this. You know, I'm not coming to the dinner table or whatever because I've got to finish this game. Hey, look, we live in a generation right now that is so selfish does not care about family, does not care about siblings or their parents. We need to be careful. Verse 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Brody, that's the one I was joking about. That I won't say that's you, but pure in their own eyes. They think there's no, they don't do anything wrong. They think they're always right. All right. Even when they do wrong, they have excuses, you know, oh, but you know, blah, 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 you know, blah, 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 talking back or whatever. Just take the blame. Stop thinking you're pure in your eyes. Mums and dads, we know you're not pure. You know you're not pure. And I know I'm not pure. Okay? But there is a generation like this. They think they're always right and they're never wrong. And look, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. They're filthy in other words. They're dirty. They're disgusting children. It's a disgusting generation. But they don't see their own filth. All right? I would say they didn't get the smack. They didn't get the rod. They didn't get the wisdom. They still got the filthiness in their lives. Verse 13. There is, there is a generation. Oh, lo, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. What's that? Full of pride. They think they're the best there is. They're the best generation that's ever come. They're better than mums and dads. You know, mums and dads, you don't know me. You're of another generation. Prideful. Okay? Don't think there's anything wrong with them. There's a generation like this, guys. I'm telling you, it's here now. It's here in Australia. It's your, it's out there in the schools right now. It's happening. Okay? And I don't want you, children, in this church, and I love you very much, my own kids and the other kids of the other parents. I love you all. I don't want you to be part of this generation. Okay? We don't want to, but it'd be very easy to be that generation. All right? Verse 14. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives. 
to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Hey, they're destructive with a speech. They pull down people. They destroy others because they think they're so good. Look, they seek to harm who? Devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. They seek and harm the easy targets, right? The poor and needy, the cowards. They won't go up against real authority. They won't go up against people that can stand up to them. They would rather go to the poor and needy and be just bullies, all right? That's a generation that is here today. Look at 15, verse 15. The horse leech. You know what that is? The horse leech? It's a leech. You know what leeches are? They're bloodsuckers. All right? I never forget when we went to the rainforest in Mulaney and there was a leech on, on Sebastian's head. All right? Thank God. You know, I mean, Christina was struggling to take it off. It was like being pulled. It was getting like really long. Thank God he didn't attach to his head yet. But we got a leech off. It's, it's hard enough to get a leech off you even when they're not attached, you know, and sucking blood. But leeches are bloodsuckers. They're disgusting, you know, slimy animals, right? They suck blood. It says in verse 15, the horse leech have two daughters crying, give, give. You know, it's like, like this, this uh, generation. They're never satisfied. I want more. I want more. Give me this. Give me that. They go to the shops. Mom, can you buy me this? Can you buy me that? That's the generation we live in right now. They're blood suckers. There are three things, it says here in verse 15. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, it is enough. What are these things in verse 16? The grave. The grave is something that's never satisfied. Why? Because people keep dying. You know, generation after generation, every day people are dying. The grave is never satisfied. Death will continue until the Lord Jesus Christ restores all things. And then it says, and the barren womb. You know, ladies that can't fall pregnant. You know, they're never satisfied. In a good way, because they want children, right? And it, it's such, it brings such sorrow and sadness when a barren woman can't fall pregnant and have a little baby. That's number two. Number three, the earth that is not filled with water, it's never satisfied. You know, because if there's no water, if there's a great drought on this earth, nothing can grow. Okay, we need water to sustain life. And if we don't have the water, you know, uh, the desire for growth can't come. There'll be no growth. And then it says, and the fire... And this is interesting, the fourth one. And the fire that saith not, it is enough. It's a fire that burns forever. It's never satisfied. It reminds me of hellfire. Okay? That's a fire that will never be quenched. It's comparing all these things to this wicked generation. Okay? And it's a generation now. It's this generation that you are in right now. You say, well, what, are you sure this is about children and generation? Look, look at verse 17 ties it all together now. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. You know, this is comparing that generation, guys. It's a generation that's never satisfied. It's never happy. It's never content. It always wants more. And it also uh, mocks father. You know, laughs at dad. What do you know, dad? What do you know, old man? Right? And chase her away his mother. Mom, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. You know, mom trying to come lovingly with advice. Mom, I don't want to hear that stuff. That's this wicked generation. And what does God say about the eye that mocketh at his father? It says, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. Hey, they're going to go blind. It's a generation that's, that's blind, that's unloving, that's filled with pride. God's going to bring his judgment one day upon that generation. Okay? And I don't want you guys to be part of it, okay? You have all the advantages, more so than what we had as your parents. You, you're in a good church, okay? You've got the Word of God, the King James Bible. You're learning good doctrine, okay? And yes, you got your conflicts. Learn from them, good. Grow, mature. You know, show the Lord that you're learning and that you want to be an adult that pleases Him. Do it now, guys, while God gives you much more mercy than he will give you when you're an adult. Okay, now's the time to learn. You start making these same mistakes as an adult, boy, your words are going to come crushing down. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 19, verse 26. Proverbs 19, verse 26. 
Proverbs 19, verse 26. What's the, what's the ingredient, guys? How do we fix this generation? Proverbs chapter 19, verse 26. It says, He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son... Sorry, I think I got something mixed up there before, did I? Yeah, sorry. I think I missed, mixed, uh, missed up a few references, but that's okay. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. What's the solution? Verse 27. Cease, my son. Stop it. Right? Grow up. Mature. Learn. Get wisdom. Take the punishment. Take the discipline. Cease, my son. Stop to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. You want to know how to make sure your generation, that you grow up to be someone that is knowledgeable, that have wisdom, that is not like this wicked generation. Stop listening to the knowledge and the advice of the world. You know, stop listening to uh, ungodly teachers, ungodly counsel. Stop taking in the peer pressure. That come, and you know you're doing wrong. You know, but you do it because of the peer pressure. All right? Do what the Lord, Word of God says. Put away those that are trying to destroy you and turn back to the words of knowledge. The words of knowledge are right here. All right? And the words of knowledge said, obey your parents. Okay? If that's what you're meant to do. Obey your parents. Turn to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. We'll wrap it up here. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. And I'm sure these are the words of every parent to their child, okay? These are the words of Solomon to his son, you know? And I'm sure any Christian father or mother wants the same thing for their kids. Let's just read it. I won't go into it. Let's just read it. Proverbs 6.20, it says, My son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's just a closing word of prayer.